so if the event event a is common knowledge in state of the world omega star okay now suppose the event a is common knowledge in the state of the world omega star and another you have another state omega dash which is in the same element of the partition as omega star for some player i okay so an omega dash belongs to fi of omega star for some some player i okay then what can we say about this then event a is also common knowledge it's also common knowledge in omega dash now this this may seem very strong and very surprising essentially what this means is so what is this claiming what is this theorem claiming uh, if event a is common knowledge in the state of the world omega star okay in some state of the world omega star and there is some player who cannot distinguish between omega star and omega dash then even if omega dash has occurred then event even in that even in that state omega dash the event a has to be common knowledge now this seems super strong because it seems like then you know how is the, this because one fellow cannot distinguish between omega dash and omega star how how can this uh, this country uh, such a thing hold how can it be that a remains common knowledge but but that is exactly how the uh, how the criterion of common knowledge is it is extremely demanding you know the very that it must be that you know player i knows that player d knows that etc for every such sequence of players that that criterion effectively implies uh, implies this particular thing so if there is any one player who cannot distinguish between two events then the entire thing for it to be common entire for the event to be common knowledge then it has to be that it is also common knowledge in that other state that this player cannot distinguish between okay so let's just look at the proof so a is common knowledge in omega star so now consider any sequence of like this i0 i'll start from i0 i1 dot 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 ik and then then it has to be that omega star belongs to k i 0 of k i 1 dot 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 let us call this r k i r ok see this is because a is common knowledge in omega star right so and so this is true for every i 0 to i i r now omega star belongs to this ok now what now what I will do is I will take i 0 to be that player i okay the player i who cannot distinguish between omega star and omega dash okay so take i take i0 is equal to i that means uh, take him to be this guy now this if omega star belongs to k i0 of all this which then it means therefore that fi of omega star is uh, is a subset of k i1 of k i2 of dot 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 k i r of a but then this belongs to a subset this is a subset of all this which means what which means omega dash is an element of k i1 of k i2 dot 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 k i r of a okay and remember i is just took an arbitrary sequence like this i0 i1 dot 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 ir now and i took i0 as i but the rest of them i can vary in whichever way i i want so i effectively means that this is true therefore for this whole thing is true for holds for all i1 to ir 
the point is that because I am allowed to take any length of sequence, all I am doing is I am fixing the first player as my player i and then the remaining uh, I am I'm just varying over the remaining and then I will get any any length of sequences from there also. Okay, So, this is true for all i one which means that a is common knowledge in omega dash. Okay, So, this this also means that uh, that you know as a, uh, another consequence of the demanding nature of uh, common the definition of common knowledge is that uh, you also have this particular property that if if a is common knowledge in in omega star and a is contained in b okay so a is more specific b is more general uh, if A is contained in B, then what does this mean? If A is common knowledge in omega star and A is contained in B, then B would also B is also common knowledge. Okay. In omega star. Okay. So now let's discuss the structure of uh, of sets that turn out to be common knowledge. And there is a very so if you see these properties now, you realize that you know that for a set uh, for an event to be common knowledge, it uh, it it has to have some very specific structure because it's uh, you know it seems like there is there uh, not every set can end up being common knowledge. Okay. So what? So for the first observation towards that is first is we can go back to uh, we can see what uh, what he said and let's look at actually what what is the if if you are you have a certain partition like this you have a partition like this and suppose I gave you a set. I gave you a set uh, like this. So, this is my set A, the red boundary is my set A. Now, what is uh, Ki of A? If this if this is the partition of player I, what would be Ki of A? It is just this, right. Likewise, and then suppose if I Suppose I give you another partition like this. I gave you another partition like this. Now, can you tell me what is for for this player? What would be his knowledge of a those two? Right. So, I will highlight that here. Let me see if this color works. Yeah. It would be this. And this. Right. So, so what this means is that K i of A is always the union of elements of a partition for every player okay now when you want a set to be com when you want an event to be common knowledge okay for that event to be common knowledge it has to be no firstly it has to be knowledge it has to be known to every player right and when is it known to every player when it contains in it the entire element of a particular uh, an entire element or one or more entire elements of a partition of the partition of that player right so what this means is for a set to end up becoming common knowledge yeah it should be structured very nicely with the with the way the partitions are already defined right otherwise you will you will you will soon into a, a sufficiently high into the hierarchy you will have a problem that you know someone knows someone does not know that someone knows that someone knows that something right okay so that's what we will come to now so let's try to write out this condition okay so characterizing 
that are common knowledge. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will consider, we will define a graph. Define a graph. Okay. This define a graph G and the word, uh, this is defined on vertices which are the states of the world. Okay. Take the vertices as the states of the world and when do we define, an, when is there an edge between two vertices? If there is an edge between two vertices, if there is at least one, there is some player who cannot distinguish between them. Okay. So, there is an edge between omega comma omega dash in y if there exists a player i in n such that omega dash belongs to f i of omega. So, player if there is at least one player who cannot tell the difference between omega and omega dash. So, so this condition remember is symmetric omega dash belongs to f i of omega is the same as saying omega belongs to f i of omega dash. Okay. This is these are equivalent. All right. So, this basically gives you a graph. So, this will give you a graph in which in which there are these vertices which is the states of the world. You join any uh, you join a pair of these vertices if there is at least one player who cannot tell the difference between the two. Okay. So, this this pillar cannot tell the difference between these two, this fellow cannot tell the difference between these two, there will be a third player who cannot tell the difference between these etcetera, etcetera. Okay. So, the subset C of Y is said to be is called is called a connected component. is called a connected component if for all omega omega dash in C there exists a path connecting omega to omega dash in the graph G. Okay. So, you take your set of vertices, you join them in this way that whenever there is some fellow who cannot distinguish between them, you draw an edge. Okay. Now, it can happen that the, that the entire graph becomes connected. That means, between uh, you, 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 you get a path from any vert vertex to any other vertex. Path means what? It is just a connection of a, a collection of edges. One starting from, you start from uh, i to j, go from j to k, from k to l, etc., etc., and eventually end up at the vertex that you wanted to. So, so starting, so if there, it could, it could happen that there is a path between any, every pair of vertices, or it can happen that the component, the graph has multiple connected components. Means that there is a, there is a subset of vertices such that they, they all share, have a path between, between each of them, but then none of them have a path with a, with another subset okay so the so a connected component will always be like this so you you could have you are you can have a graph like this where there is one connected component of this kind so all of these guys there is a they they are related in this way that there is a path between them but none of them have an edge to something in this subset Because if there was an edge like this from here to here, right, then this would become one connected component actually. This would not be two separate connected components. Is this clear? So, that is uh, because then there would obviously be a path from any one vertex from here to here. So, a connected component is one such that for if you, if you, so you can of course, uh, you can make, uh, so usually when we talk of a connected component, so I will come to maximality and so on. See the point here is that between every two vertices there has to be a path. 
Now, you can of course take a very small connected component, which is the point he is making. So, I can take, so for example, these guys and say, well, this is a connected component. Yes, it is a connected component, but can it, uh, can it be enlarged in uh, further? Yes, it can be. You can, you can enlarge it to the point where you, all of these guys are included, but you cannot enlarge it further than this. Right? So, actually formally speaking, I, you, a connected component is one where there is a path between any, any two vertices and if you take a vertex uh, uh, if, uh, and you cannot add another vertex to this and still keep it a connected component. Okay? Yeah. So, this is a connected component. Now, and we can talk of a maximal connected component. or let us maybe let us just extend this definition itself. Okay. So, uh, uh, C is called a connect. So, I have just extended the earlier definition because I did not want to create another maximal connect uh, this thing. So, a, uh, is let C be a connect as uh, set C is a connected component if there is a path between every any two vertices and there is no edge connecting a vertex in C to a vertex outside C. Okay. Then such a set is called a connected component. So, the graph that we have created here could end up having one or more connected components. Okay. It, now, if the entire graph is connected, then it has one connected component and that is the graph itself, Other, but in general it could have multiple connected components. Yeah, I don't understand because every, in other words, every pair of vertices is a connected component, right? Trivially a connected component. Yeah. So, the theorem is this. So, the structure of sets that end up being common knowledge. Okay. So, let us, uh, okay, first actually before the theorem, let me define this. Define C of omega, okay, as the, the connected component containing omega. So, the entire graph breaks down into connected components and every vertex is going to be in one and exactly one such connected component, right. Now, let C of omega be that connected component, okay, for, the, for a vertex omega. Now, the theorem is this, that an event A is common knowledge in omega in omega star, let us say, if and only if A is a subset of C of omega star, uh, sorry, superset of, sorry, superset of uh, C of omega, the connected component is a subset of the event, A is a superset of uh, C of omega star, okay. Now, what this means is that your A should be general enough that, so how did we create the graph? Remember, we created the graph by saying we will, if, if there is any one player who cannot disti uh, distinguish between two events, then there is an edge between them. Now, you keep, you keep creating this chain of players, you know, this fellow cannot distinguish between this two, that guy cannot distinguish between that and something else, etc., etc., and you create a, your graph. In that, you will find a connected component, okay. So, for A to be a, a, a to be common knowledge, it has to be large enough or more, you know, but intuitively general enough that the entire connected component for the event that you are considering, for the state of the world that you are considering, that entire connected component has to be in A. Okay. So, what this means is for us, for when a set is, ends up being common knowledge, right, it cannot be very, very specific. You know, this is also intuitively correct, you know, the things that everybody knows, that everybody knows, that everybody knows, etc., are usually things that are generalities, you know, 
that today is Friday, uh, you know, that not, such now is this time, etc. If you ask me something very specific, right, that mean that is known to very specific players who have that specific knowledge, who have uh, the, the information channels to know that particular specific thing. For something to be known by common knowledge across multiple players, it has to be therefore large enough or in gen or basically general enough. And a trivial set therefore that is always common knowledge is Y itself, right. Everybody knows that this, this is, this is the, all the states of the world or in short everybody knows that something has happened. Is this clear? Okay. So, next time we will prove this. Another consequence of this is that in any state of the world, there is always one set that is, there is one event that is always common knowledge. And the minimal such event that is common knowledge, the minimal thing that everybody knows, that everybody knows, that everybody knows, is that connected component. Is that's the most specific thing that everyone can have agreement on. Okay. So this is this the the uh, this notion of common knowledge has tremendous implications. Like for example, take all these coordination problems, consensus, you know, uh, uh, coordination on. Uh, distributed optimization, uh, federated learning, etc. What do various agents in a, a actually know about a particular thing is being, def is, is basically being expressed through this. You can actually show that there are certain types of uh, protocols that cannot converge unless there is an underlying structure wherein a certain thing is common knowledge. You know, if, for example, if, if, uh, uh, if if there is a, if if certain elements are not common knowledge like for example players do not agree on on certain distributions or do not agree on certain aspects of the data or something like that then certain there are proto you can show that there is no protocol that can work okay very interesting things can be shown uh, shown from this